Uh, good morning, everybody. This is Rob with Horror Pop After Midnight. It's um, early morning here in the States, and I'm talking to Liam Regan, who is over across the pond in England, where it's almost in the afternoon. Um, thank you for coming on. No, no, seriously, pleasure is all mine, Robin. Pleasure is all mine. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about your edgy and dark humor Bloody gory good uh, eating Miss Campbell. How'd you come up with that crazy idea? Yeah, well, you know, it was kind of weird because all my friends were turning vegan. So it'd be funny if there was a vegan who had a taste for human flesh and it's this moral dilemma. And then I wanted to satire uh, school shootings and other tragedies. Uh, so it's like a, a like a social political satire. Because I kind of, you know, I love South Park and, and I grew up watching trauma films. And I miss seeing that kind of horror comedy in this uh, socially conscious uh, environment that we now live in. That's pretty good. Um, How did you hook up with Lloyd Kaufman and trauma films? I've been a trauma fan since I was 11 years old. And, uh, I, you know, I always used to email Lloyd when I was a kid. And then when he announced he was shooting Return to Newcomb High in Buffalo, Niagara, in New York, I just jumped on a plane by myself. And I, uh, you know, met so many strangers that soon became family. And I slept on the floor of an abandoned funeral home uh, whilst making Return to Newcomb High in 2012. And uh, since then, Lloyd's been a huge supporter of what I make. That's wild. You slept in a uh, funeral home on the floor. How creepy yeah, was how creepy was that? <laughs> yeah, you know, quite creepy. I think the creepiest thing about it was that there was like 60 people sleeping there and only two showers. So <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that was kind of uh it was an experience. It was a traumatic experience, you could say. All right. Um let's talk about the main character uh Beth Connor. Who's a you know a, a gothic girl, a vegan, and she's also a cannibal, where she's fighting her temptation to eat meat, which is pretty wild. Which is played by Lindsay Crane. Um, was Lindsay Crane uh, your ideal uh, actress for that role? Yeah, you know, in, in fact, the um, so the character of Beth Connor was from a script, a screenplay called Parents Evening that I was making because. My Bloody Banjo uh, failed. Like, it, it didn't make any money whatsoever. It took me a long time to make a second movie. And I was in the belief of, oh, I guess my kind of uh, humor didn't translate well. And I was trying to make, like, a straight horror film. Uh, you know, whilst writing Parents Evening, I was like, this is what I write. This is, I don't even watch films like this. So I thought, fuck it. I'm going to take the character of Beth Connor and place her here in a film called Eating Miss Campbell. And I guess the title was kind of inspired by, like, teaching Miss Tingle in a way. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 Lindsay, when I first saw Lindsay creating Book of Monsters, I was like, okay, she is definitely the actress I would love to play Beth Connor. And, uh, you know, I kept, I kept, because the, the first time I wrote the script, I was like, I can't send this to Lindsay because the first version of the script, I mean, I, I'm kind of ashamed to put my name to it. It's that out there. And I, you know, so, you know, I think by the second or third draft, when I kind of balanced things out, I was happy enough to send it to her and she was graceful enough to agree to play the part. Yeah, um, I loved how she played the character. I loved uh, the mannerisms, how she portrayed the character, and those classic one liners. I mean, that was just wild. And the character she plays is, you know, every time she tries to commit suicide, she wakes up in another, you know, like dimension, like from like out of a horror film and nothing goes good for her. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, that's like the analogy of, you know, because I, I was a depressed goth when I was a kid and I felt like every day I was trapped in a horror film. And I felt like that was a great analogy for someone that, she is a character essentially stuck in a trauma film and each time she kills herself she'll be in another film so at the beginning of this movie she slits her wrists and then she finds herself in a film called eating miss campbell yeah and um i love when she finally meets miss campbell and they have that great chemistry together where she actually falls for her you know she's like Ooh, who's this beautiful woman, man? I'm so intrigued. 
And I just, I just love, you know, the whole, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody. I just love the whole twist, what happens between them two. It's one of those, you like threw like a bloody curveball and it's like, whoa, I didn't see that going there. Yeah, man, you know, it, it, there's nothing worse when you go to the cinema and you're watching a movie and you kind of, you know, you can be one step ahead of the film. Like, you know what's coming next. I've seen a few Hollywood films like that because they play it safe. Where, like, for me, I'm like, fuck it. You need to kind of turn the genre on its head and do something completely out of the ordinary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was just wild. And um, I like the... Uh... I also like the uh, headmaster, you know, who came from America, you know, talking about violence. Boy, he sure did have a trigger finger, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Mr. So Mr. Sawyer played by Vito Trigo. So I met Vito when I worked on Return to Newport High because mm-hmm. I met him through trauma. And, uh, you know, we struck up a great friendship because we both love professional wrestling. And he saw me one day with my Cactus Jack t-shirt and we just became the bestest of friends. And, uh, you know, I, I wrote this character as Mr. Sawyer from My Bloody Banjo. And I, I love working with Vito in My Bloody Banjo, but I was thinking, okay, how can I bring the character of Mr. Sawyer back? And to me, he'd be perfect for Eating Miss Campbell. So then Eating Miss Campbell became a quasi-sequel to My Bloody Banjo. It's kind of like what Mallrats is to Clerks in a way. Yeah, um, another great actress she brought in. Um, I've seen some of her stuff. Um, Charlie Bond, um, she was like... Uh, freaky and uh she was a trip you know playing the stepmother in the film um charlie bond's performance was great you can tell she was really having fun getting into it and putting her heart and soul into that role charlie is fantastic she's such a trooper and she will give you everything and anything and she is just so committed and she's so maniacal and that's what I kind of love about her performance and just the characters that I write. The characters I write are very uh, over the top in some ways. It is very kind of a hyper reality where Beth uh, plays it so straight that you're the audience seeing all this absurdness through Lindsay's eyes. And Charlie is uh, Frankie Sullivan. She really fucking uh, elevates the film. Uh, she really, you know, and, and I'm, just, I'm so gracious and I appreciate, you know, a friendship I have with Charlie Bond, but also the working relationship. And I really hope to work with her again in future. That's great. And um, your film is doing great, you know, all over in the film festivals all around the world. It's getting like good reviews and a lot of people are really liking it. Um, so how's it feel to be going to all these, you know, different film festivals? Oh, you know, it's a complete privilege. It is a complete, and it's very surreal because, uh, you know, 11 years old, all I wanted to do in life was to make a trauma film. And I've kind of done that now. And it's like, if I die tomorrow, I feel like I've lived a very privileged and humble and kind of uh, fulfilled life, should I say. And, you know, it's, it's a dream come true, man. I love these movies. And, you know, for free to play, to, to fly over all, all over the world and to see it play is fantastic. However, I will say that, you know, as much as we have good reviews, we also have as many negative reviews. But what I like about that is it's not a film that someone shrugs at. It's a film that they either love or they either hate. And to me, that's such a fantastic kind of um, subversive kind of audience. I mean, that's the perfect kind of audience. People that love it and people that hate it. When you make a film that people are like, oh, it's average, I think that's when there's a problem. I, I, you know, I think that's cool. That's like that for any film. That's the same thing with pro wrestling because I'm a big pro wrestling fan too. Oh. And oh. and um, it, 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 it's just like a movie too, you know. Um, you invest in these characters, you know, especially if you get a, like a villain. You know, if he's doing his job pissing off people and all that and hating them, you know he's doing one hell of a job and he's got everybody, you know, invested into that you know character you know which is pretty cool and there's and i noticed there's some uh you know references like that in your film you know kind of remind me a little bit of pro wrestling characters because um i was invested in some of the characters in that movie you know especially beth connor i was so invested in her you know you know i wanted to see you know that happy ending for her and all that and it's like no, you know, you can't commit suicide. You're cool. You're a cool little goth <laughs> girl, man. You kind of remind me of Wednesday Adams. And um, another thing, too, about, you know, being a great filmmaker, too, um, I loved how your film got refused classification in uh, South um, Africa. How did that happen? <laughs> 
Yeah, you're crazy. I only got to know that last week. So we were scheduled to play the South African Horror Fest that's been over 18 years. Yeah. And I guess their uh, classification board wanted to screen a few films. Because usually the festivals, they're known as like an exhibition, so you don't really need to go through the rating system in some countries. And, you know, so they refused classification, and I was sent back but from the festival program as the report. And it was pretty funny in a way, like how they talk about profanity, and talk about like uh, like uh, uh, unsociable characters, like just really kind of like weird things. If you look at the awful shit that goes up in South Africa, I mean, you know, there's this film that you want to censor, yet there's all this kind of like you know uh, racial unrest and everything. It's pretty. And you know, I've been to South Africa twice. I had family over there when I was younger, so I just find it kind of um, poetic that. Yeah, he's got refused classification, but you know what, man? If you're a horror filmmaker, to me, it's like a seal of approval. <laughs> I think so, too. I mean, you're doing their job. They're like, whoa. Yeah. So you know a lot of people in South Africa who are diehard horror fans are probably mad. You know, they're trying to find ways. It's like, I got to see this movie. So what was the big deal? They turned it down. Now you got me hooked. I'm either going to exactly. like it. Yeah, I'm going to either like it or don't like it. I just want a fun, you know. You know, like a bloody war film, man. Um, when I when I read about that, I, I was I was sitting there laughing. Um, the one scene you did in um, eating Miss Campbell was between Miss Campbell and the uh, human resource teacher. Oh my yeah. god! Oh, especially like the slit of the throat and then all the blood flowing like a waterfall. Kind of remind me of like a a Tarantino scene. You know how blood's like floating, flying, and all that. And, totally. and and the whole part about the penis, I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, that was so disturbing. <laughs> but the thing about it is, I must be sick in the head because I, I thought that scene was wildly brilliant. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, I, you know, it's really weird because, you know, I don't think it's that extreme of a movie. So when South Africa kind of rejected it, I'm like, you know, it's, it's, it's not really that extreme because the comedy kind of softens the blow. And I think that's why I look at horror comedy. But I do love practical effects and I do love on-screen violence. I grew up watching, you know, the Tron movies and Robocop and all this kind of ultra-violence kind of stuff. And to me, prosthetics and special effects, as practical as you can make them, go for it, you know, because it always evokes a reaction and then laughter. That's what horror comedy should do well. But yeah, man, like my bloody banjo that had a prosthetic penis, Amos Campbell has a prosthetic penis. I think that's just my thing. So whenever I make the third movie, I'm going to fit a prosthetic penis in there somewhere. <laughs> oh my gosh, you have like penis envy. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. I mean, completely. <laughs> um, The actresses you got to, um, to play the mean girls... They were just so fun to watch, you know. Uh, one of them kind of remind me of Shannon Doherty a little bit from Heather's. I mean, you cast those, uh, you know, girls good. I mean, they were entertaining. Yeah, you know, it's like I love seeing that kind of cliche girl click in films, and we've seen it in Heather's, we've seen it in Jawbreak, we've seen it in Mean Girls, we've seen it in Tragedy Girls, and to me, it's like, okay, so these are the Mean Girls of the 2020s. You know, because we've got Heather's from the 80s, Jawbreak from the 90s, Mean Girls from the uh, 2000s, Tragedy Girls from the 2010s, and now we're going to Miss Campbell of the 2020s. So I just thought it had to be, and you know, I, I, took, I took homage from all those movies because I love all those films. Uh, but yeah, man, like, to me, if Beth is stuck in a uh, horror movie, they needs to be the cliche female clique. They needs to be the jock. They needs to be, you know, all these tropes to kind of send up. Um, and then the whole, I love how you went deep into, um, Beth's uh, family in the film, you know, you kind of are trying to figure out, you know, about, you know, what happened to her mother. And, and I like how you made it into like a little origin story part of the film. And then that whole betrayal when she finds out about, you know, her father and stepmother and the whole story about her mother. That was a definitely blow. I was I didn't even see that coming, and that whole yeah. and that whole feast was just pretty funny to watch. I was just laughing. Thanks, man. Yeah, like I said, I just thought you know let let's turn the convention on its head, and because it's called eating Miss Campbell, but then we see Beth like on a table, for example, ready to be eaten. Spoilers. Uh, that like <laughs> you know I I thought that I thought that I'd be that I'd throw the audience off the whole time. Um, you know, it's really funny because, like, you know, I've read some reviews and some reviews are saying, oh, there's too many school shooting jokes and not enough cannibalism. 
And I'm thinking, did they, you know, are these the same kind of people that say, oh, I've seen train spotting, there's no trains in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just find it kind of uh, funny, you know. <laughs> and another funny part about the movie, too, is, I mean, uh, was the guy in the Ronald Reagan mask, what decide you to uh, put a guy in a Ronald Reagan mask in the film. <laughs> so, so, like, in one of those scenes, it was actually me in the Ronald Reagan mask. So, it, uh, <laughs> in one scene, it was me, and then in the other scene, it was my producer that donned it. So, in my first movie, uh, My Bloody Banjo, mm-hmm. the imaginary friend in that is called Ronnie. And originally, it was based on Ronnie Reagan. So, the idea for eating Miss Campbell was that with the backstory of uh, Peltzer shooting up had a lot of high school many years ago because yeah. of his imaginary friend Ronnie that there were going to be copycat killers in the school and it was only like in subtext I wanted to put that um, uh, and then obviously you know um, Mr. Sawyer puts the end uh, to that and uh, says look if we're going to you know if we're going to have a school shooting then we may as well make money from it and that's when the idea of the all you can eat massacre comes about that's pretty good. So um, this is like your uh, second film you ever filmed besides Bloody Banjo. Um, so what's your next project? What, what are you going to be doing next? I have no idea. <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird because like it, it was a good seven years between My Bloody Banjo and Eating Miss Campbell. Um, and a lot of that was due to uh, My Bloody Banjo not making its money back. And I had to kind of you know, put money into Ian Miss Campbell and raise funds as well. Um, but I do have one more idea, uh, like, for, a, you know, to just have the trilogy, because My Bloody Banjo is the first one, Ian Miss Campbell's the second. I've got an idea, I've got, kind of got a slight idea for the third one, that'll bring back Mr. Sawyer, the headmaster, and a few others. Because even though these characters die in these films, they can come back, a bit like Kenny from South Park, he can die in one episode, he can come back the next yeah, I, I like Mr. Sawyer, man. I would just like to see a, a standalone film with him. You know, yeah. I think it would be one of those most wildest films to ever watch. I like to see his adventures, what's he going to do next, and what's going through his crazy little mind. Oh, dude, same here. I mean, I love like working with Vito, and I love Mr. Sawyer. His redemption arc in, in his camera yeah. is so good because, you know, he turns out to be a bad guy, but when, then we reveal that he's not really a bad guy. You know, he's just trying to, you know, you know, he, he's got this thing against child molesters. Yeah. I love that, you know? And to me, he, that kind of makes him the anti-hero, a bit like what Freddy Krueger is to the Elm Street series. Yeah. He's bad, but you kind of want to root for him as well. I love how Beth got justice, you know, against the jock who was the child molester in the film. I mean, um, he thought he was going to, you know, get some good action from her and all that. But boy, that sure did turn around on him. And I just thought that was brilliant. Yeah, man, you know, I, yeah, completely. And, and to me, when you make a good, like, horror film or a trauma film, you need to have these really violent set pieces because that's what kind of makes the films. You need to make them as gory and, uh, like, bloody and kind of violent as possible. And, yeah, uh, you know, if, in a way, it's kind of a feminist kind of film written by a, a, a cis white male. So. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I got that idea, too. And, you know, and I love the cameo from Lloyd Kaufman, too. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't even write that line. So I gave Lloyd like three pages of script to read. So you know, he read it and he filmed it, and then he said this off the cuff line at the end, and I'm like, wow. You know, fuck what I've written. Let's just use that, and it always gets a laugh uh, inside cinema. Uh, and it's also the joke that everyone seems to write about. So people are either on board for it or they find it completely offensive. But either way, it's great. Oh, I think so too. Lloyd Kaufman's brilliant. He's a funny dude, man. He is. <laughs> uh, he, yeah, I, was, I would love to meet him and pick his brain. Eventually, I will. But you know, he he seems like he's a really cool dude, and you know, really, you know, uh, give you uh, gave you this chance to really, you know, prove yourself for since this is like your you know your second film, and it's just great how he gave you that chance to prove yourself. Oh yeah, he's the best. You know, like I, I, you know, I, I, I'll be. I, I, I need to say that without Lloyd Kaufman and without Trauma Entertainment, I would not be a filmmaker. Like you know, the only reason I wanted to get into filmmaking is because I saw Top School Avenger Part Two when I was only eleven years old, mm-hmm. and I saw this kind of like uh, maniacal slapstick satire, um, and I'm like, this is what I kind of want to do. This is over the top. It's funny. It's offensive. 
sign me up right now. All right, I got a question for you. So what does horror mean to you? Horror to me, uh, I, I think horror is a fantastic escape for the outsiders uh, of society. Like when I was a kid, I was bullied at school. So I felt like a horror, watching a horror film on the evening was a fantastic way to escape from reality. And I feel horror really uh, appeals to those that uh, are the misfits of society, the ones that don't want to fall in line, the, the punk rock kids. And for me, it's comfort. I totally agree too. Um, since you've been doing some, um, you, so you are going to mostly be focusing on horror films and then eventually later venture out into any other genre of film? I mean, if it's up to me, which I think it is, um, I will only make horror films or horror comedy just because, you know, people, so people come into the industry or people break into the industry, should I say, to make horror because it has a built-in audience and then they venture up to do things. So what they do is they use and abuse horror. Me, horror was my first love and what's great about horror is that there's so many subgenres to horror. Like, you know, there's the horror comedy, there's horror action, there's sci-fi horror, there's, you know, uh, uh, horror drama, there's, there's so much uh, psychological horror, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I feel horror has this kind of like vast kind of um, uh, 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 outreach. And to me, it's like uh, horror can be anything. To me, horror can be bloody, horror can be uh, pure terror, horror can be psychological, horror can be dramatic. So, yeah, it, you know, just to answer that question, I will, if it was up to me, I've only got any interest in horror. Like, if I get paid, if, I want, if someone wants to hire me a lot of money to make a drama, I'll be more than happy to do it, but then I'll take the money and make more horror films. So, you know. Hey, I like the way you think is, you mean, I like all genre of film, you know, and um, horror by far is my fave, and then right behind action, but, you know, I always watch more horror films, and then, you know, I don't know what it is, it's just great, and, um, I, and I love supporting indie filmmakers and indie horror, I mean, because there's a, a lot of great stuff out there in indie horror, and like you said, there's a lot that's like crap that it shouldn't have been made, you know, and I just I, I just like it because it's fresh and original than mainstream Hollywood because the the big movies in Hollywood there's some good ones out there don't get me wrong but most of it is it just seems like it's just like hashed out recycled ideas you know I want something fresh I don't want to see something made over and over again yeah exactly and, and I also feel like some of these mainstream films it's all just jump scares and it's all and they all they also look too polished. Like, I remember when I saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre when I was a kid, and I'm like, oh my god, this film is so raw and real and dirty, and <laughs> it made me want to take a shower. Like, films <laughs> these days just feel, like, over-sanitized and just overproduced, and there's too much money, and everyone's gorgeous in them and beautiful, and it's like, come on, you know, this is, this, this is, the, this is just product. It's not art, it's just product. All right, so where can everybody find you on social media to see what you're doing next? Sure, man. Yeah, so uh, anyone can follow me at uh, Instagram or Twitter at Refuse Liam. That's uh, R E F U S E, and then Liam spelled L I A M. Or they can go to refusefilms.com, uh, which I have an online store if they want to pre order any of the titles or merchandise. We've got t shirts, we've got posters. Uh, and yeah, uh, please, everyone, feel free to either add me on Facebook, especially if there's any uh, filmmakers out there, up and coming um, filmmakers that want any advice or if they have any other questions. You know, find me on Facebook at Liam Regan, and I'll be more than happy to uh, give you any advice. I definitely give it. A, I gave your uh, film a good review on IMDb. <laughs> thank, oh, thank you, thank you. We kind of need that because uh, IMDb seems to be getting um, uh, ratings bombed uh, by this one particular guy. He keeps rating this one particular guy who I guess is just jealous. He keeps creating fake accounts and uh, and and rating one star. And then he goes to Letterboxd and he does the same thing. But you know it's the same guy because he writes the same way. And the only thing he, he, he reviews is eating Miss Campbell. So uh, <laughs> if anyone out there that sees the movie that wants to give us a, a nice review or a nice...